the Maui Jim Maui Invitational, we're all about efficiency. And this is the most efficient way to get to the games. But we're experiencing a lot of drag here in the ocean, and I can't figure out why. That's why. Dan Dockage, the Maui Jim Maui Invitational, next. Gets me every time. Welcome to the Maui Jim Maui Invitational. We are here in beautiful Lahaina. How's this for a nice morning? Good morning to those of you here on the islands and on the west coast. Good afternoon to those of you back on the east coast. We've got semifinal number one, Marquette and Wichita State, both advancing with the wins yesterday. The second semifinal much later on this afternoon or this evening, depending on where you are, is Notre Dame takes on LSU. Three of the four games really terrific yesterday. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis. Today should be a great day of basketball as well. Wichita State, ranked sixth in the nation, survived a scare yesterday against Cal. Well, they were scared because they were awful the first 30 minutes, but in the last 10 minutes against the Cal Golden Bears, Wichita State was fantastic. Led by Shaq Morris and Landry Shamit, they went inside to the big guy. They dominated the offensive glass. They put a press on and turned over Cal, but Shaq Morris had 25 points, most in the paint, 18 in the second half, and Landry Shamit coming off an injury that he suffered this summer is getting back to normal and normal for him is all america good he had 23 points went eight of ten from the field four of four from three and wichita state if they want to win this game has to deal with marquette's three outstanding shooters sam hauser who was outstanding yesterday against vcu andrew rousey and marcus howard two of the best shooters in the country elite shooters that are vastly underrated and you have to find those guys after offensive rebounds because they look out to that three-point line to get step-in threes. Steve Wojciechowski, this is his fifth time coming to the Maui Invitational. Once as a player, three times as an assistant at Duke, now as a head coach at Marquette. He's never lost a game here. He is 13-0. Greg Marshall uh, has had such an incredible run in recent years at Wichita State, a one seed, a Final Four, numerous conference championships. And here were his thoughts moments ago to his team in the locker room. Poise, purpose, and passion. We didn't have the passion for the first 25 minutes yesterday. We barely survived. We need poise, okay? Don't throw the ball out to the other team. We need purpose and passion. Marcus McDuffie said it best at halftime. I didn't think I was still at Wichita State after the first half yesterday, okay? I don't want to confuse Marcus McDuffie. Do you? All right, let's go. Love that. Marcus McDuffie injured, terrific player, leading scorer and rebounder from a year ago, but he's out with a stress fracture in his foot. That's the game plan today for the Shockers. Don't confuse Marcus McDuffie. And that is one cool dude, the yep. leading scorer and leading rebounder. Yesterday he had glasses on, sunglasses, and now he's got the, uh, the visor backward, the chain. King of cool. This should be a great game. Uh, both teams put up over 90 in their first round games yesterday. The winner will advance to the championship game tomorrow. The loser will play in the third place game. Notre Dame and LSU victorious on the other side. Great win for LSU over Michigan. Notre Dame beating Chaminade. Two great fan bases, two passionate fan bases have brought a lot of people here to the islands for Thanksgiving week. We're ready to roll with Wichita State in white, Marquette in blue. Terry Weimer, Tony Padilla, Tim Nestor, the officials. <laughs> <laughs> Third time is apparently the charm. Shaq Morris didn't like that eventual toss. Neither did the Shockers fans. Marquette with the first possession. These poor officials. The toss has become so difficult these days. The yeah. players are so big. They had to just do check ball and <laughs> let the do a coin flip like they do in the NFL. Sam Hauser at 6'8", terrific shooter, better than 40% from beyond the arc last season, and as Jay mentioned, had a terrific all-round game for the Golden Eagles yesterday. Shot clock's down to two. Floater for Rousey is there. Well, Marquette with very good patience against a, an excellent defensive team in Wichita State. The Shockers are 3-0 and on the season. They trailed Cal by as many as 18 points yesterday, early in the second half put a press on the rest of the game and wound up winning by 10 but they were in trouble for most of that game Morris for three and a great offensive rebound by Zach Brown Brown and Richard Kelly who's getting the start in place of Daryl Willis Jr. are two terrific rebounders and grinders and as Greg Marshall said to us before the game, that guy right there's got a bit of dog in him. And if they want to win this game, they got to have some dog in him today. Well, that dog in him is why he's starting in this game. 
Rashard Kelly had seven offensive rebounds in yesterday's game against Cal, and he is an excellent. He does an excellent job of chasing after the ball. He had ten rebounds, uh, and seven of them offensive. Wichita State in the win over Cal. They had 24 offensive rebounds yesterday. Marquette had 15 in their win over VCU that they turned into 22 points because they kept picking the ball out to all those great shooters. Wichita State did not win that game because of making shots. They won because of offensive rebounds and turnovers. Matt Helt, blue collar guy, eight rebounds, couple of blocks yesterday in the win for Marquette. This is Marcus Howard, one of the elite shooters in the country. Off to Hauser. Got it. Shark Kelly just late getting there with Hauser. And Hauser's always ready to shoot. That guy just knows how to play. He was outstanding yesterday against VCU. Not good, outstanding. He had 20 points in the win, nine rebounds, three assists, two blocks, two steals. You talk about stuffing the stat sheet. Well, Steve Wojciechowski has to have him on the floor. He makes everybody better. The three is there for Zach Brown, the senior from Houston. Well, Zach Brown is the best defender on this team. Anything he gives you offensively is a bonus, because right now he's guarding Marcus Howard, and that's a big assignment. Rousey using the ball screen got a pretty good look at the bucket, but misses the three. There's Connor Frankamp. Keep an eye on him. 33 and white. Good shooter, but had a tough day yesterday. Morris gets free inside. And just no chance going for round one. And Shaq Morris took his first shot from three, but where he's devastating is going to be in that pain, and that's where Wichita State has its advantage. They want to go inside early and often and keep going inside. Got four shooters around one, and you can see that Help just got caught on the top side. That's too high to be in front. You've got to be behind there. Now, you get down in the lower region of the, the lane, you've got to get around in front and force them to go over the top and try to get as much ball pressure as you can. And, Jay, early trouble for Marquette. That's the second foul on Sam Hauser. Less than three minutes into the game, one of their most indispensable players is on the bench. And he got it. He got his second one setting a screen on the offensive yeah. end. Shamit. And that all started with Morris passing out of a double team. Double team comes as soon as Shaq Morris put the ball on the, the deck. The double team came and the pass out and then the extra pass. And Landry Shamit is shooting the ball so well. He looks extraordinarily confident. Shamit with a career high tying 23 points in yesterday's game. And he was perfect from beyond the arc. So if you will give Morris credit for the hockey assist there. The second pass that eventually led to the great look for Shamit. Now Marquette just a little bit smaller. With Sakar Anum in the ball game, good, good move there by Marcus Howard. Just bumps back into the corner. Great read of the defense and an excellent pass from Cheetah. We mentioned it yesterday, but it bears repeating. Marcus Howard led the nation in three-point shooting last year with almost 55 percent. As Morris has called for the travel, and obviously the fear of any team that plays against Marquette is how to control these shooters. Well, you can see doing a really nice job of just. Bumping back into the corner, and Zach Brown went for the pass and got burned by it. And Marquette forced to use a timeout. Three-point lead, shockers early. Hey, hey, hey. Well, Rusty's not <laughs> even here working. Whoa, down goes Rusty. Three-point lead, Wichita State. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis grinding at another day here in Maui. Uh, Maui Jim Maui Invitational semifinal number one of Marquette in blue Wichita State in white Andrew Rousey nice kick Wide open shot in the corner of the three for Sakar Annam redshirt sophomore from Minneapolis Just a terrific move by Andrew Rousey One of the best shot fakes in America and he's got that shot credibility because you know he can make the original one Howard, long look ahead, tipped out of bounds by Brown. But Richard Kelly going after that rebound with Sakar Anum. Had his arm right around Anum. Little shot fake, drew two defenders, including Kelly. Kelly was the main culprit there, over-helping, really. Because once he's inside that line, you want to make him take a tough two. 
But if you overhelp, then you're leaving a good shooter wide open, and Anum can make shots. And Anum actually just had a toe on the line, so that was a two. Look at this tough shot. Wow. Howard with a long two after getting his man in the air. Marquette hot early, and they've got the lead. And you start knocking shots down, then all of a sudden those shot fakes become even more effective. Darrell Willis being guarded by Anum. They need to go inside to him. The O'John into the game now for Marquette. Number four, 6'9", 245 freshman. Another offensive rebound, and it's Willis, who was not in the starting lineup today. Greg Marshall put Richard Kelly in there. Uh, wants more from Willis than he got in yesterday's game. A little more motivation for Darrell Willis. He didn't have his best game yesterday. Wichita State wants to play gritty. And they're going to have to have a lot of grit to stay with these Marquette shooters. Jim headquarters, the Maui Jim Maui Invitational here from Lahaina. This tournament started way back in the 80s. I think this is the 34th Maui Invitational. Always a great event. You always get to see some of the great teams from across the country playing top-notch competition here in November. Marcus Howard stepped out of bounds as he was coming off that screen on the baseline. And when you step out of bounds and you're not forced out, you cannot be the first player to catch the ball after you step out of bounds. So it's a, that's a turnover by rule. Officials right on top of it. Wichita stayed up by one, less than five minutes in. The winner on to the championship game tomorrow. Again, just joining us, Marquette, without Sam Hauser at the moment, two very early fouls. We've got a whistle away from the ball and a call going against the Golden Eagles, and we'll go on Howard. It's a pretty good guy sitting on the bench right now. Remains to be seen if he comes back in the first half. He will. I don't think that when you've got, especially guys that have experience, I don't think you can keep them out of the game that long. One, if you do with two fouls, you're playing better defense on your team than the other team can. Grand Camp, one for 11 yesterday, knocks down a 15-footer. And this is first one today, which was a little short corner jumper. So seeing it go through the net always helps a great shooter. Anum getting some minutes early with Hauser on the bench. Greg Elliott, a freshman, number five into the game. Rousey gets free. Tip drill, and it comes down to Marquette. Anum. How many times did Marquette get a three off an offensive rebound in yesterday's game? Shannon to Frenchan. Just talking about when the first one goes in, and all of a sudden Connor Frenchan seeing a bigger basket. He's from Wichita, started his career playing for Bill Self at Kansas and transferred back home. And he's gotten better and better as a player in the last couple of years. Both guards can handle, both can shoot, and now Theo John called for the illegal screen. Camp on the inbounds play. Little pivot. Pulls her up right over Marcus Howard. And then you can see him call it for it on the other side of the floor. And a great job by Landry Shaman of getting back to the middle of the floor and drawing the attention of the defense, then kicking it out to the open Fran Camp who is stepping into it. Grand Camp will sit Austin Reeves, a 6'5 sophomore from Newark, Arkansas, into the game for the first time. Also, Rono Nurger with the ball, number 20, 6'10 senior from Estonia. Did some really good things for the Shockers yesterday. He played really well in the game against Cal. I think he had 11 points, 6 rebounds, played a lot of big minutes, and played some tough minutes as well. The first look to Jamal Kane today, freshman from Pontiac, into the game for Marquette. And Nurger was wide open. The rotation for Marquette wasn't as good as they needed. Brown no. Shocker's on the glass, but it's going against them. It'll be Nurger. I didn't see that. I, that just looked like rebounding to me. Everybody had their hands up. How can you go over the back and you got your hands up? Both teams, as mentioned, really did a great job of the offensive glass yesterday and both looking to do the same here today. Remember how early of a start this is, too. Tip-off was at 8.30 local time. We know we heard from Coach Greg Marshall. They were up watching film, the team, at 6 a.m. today, watching some things from last night and watching Marquette as well. And they kept saying to the kids, it's it's not 6 a.m., it's 10 a.m. back in Wichita. We don't know what you're talking about. It's a noon start today. They're trying to keep the kids focused on what time it feels like as opposed to what time it really is.
into Howard. Howard just a sophomore, originally committed to Arizona State. Driving in, kicking to the corner. Annam's been in that corner ever since he came into the game. Strong drive to the goal, and he'll head to the free throw line. Now Marcus Howard has a really nice hesitation move with that dribble. And anytime you can get, whether it's Rousey or Howard, get them to put the ball on the floor and get inside the paint. That takes away a, a fair amount of their effectiveness because they're three-point shooters more than anything. But they do a really good job of finding people, and Marquette's spacing is excellent. Do a great job of spacing the floor and stretching the defense, which gives you a better opportunity to drive. And at the line for Marquette, redshirted last year, won four state championships in high school in Minnesota. And misses both free throws badly. Now one of the things when you play Marquette, you cannot overhelp. If you get guys like Howard and Rousey, Hauser, to dribble the ball inside the three-point line, make them take a tough two. You know, don't overhelp where you're giving up a pass for a step in three. Nice look inside. Nurser lays it in. You know, Marquette looks like they're trying to front the post. And Wichita State is getting the ball to the middle of the floor where they can isolate that post. And you've got to be really careful to front the post from too high up. It's an easy pass in from a high-low angle. Marquette's without Hauser on the bench with a couple of fouls. Rousey getting ready to check back in. Howard, nothing else to do but hit a tough turnaround. That was a tough turnaround. we got some shot makers in this game. Just beautiful, beautiful shooting strokes by Rousey and Howard. And second game this morning from Lahaina on the consolation side. We'll have VCU and Cal for you. Two teams who like to press for 40 minutes should be a really interesting game. Willis is open if they want to get it to him. Shaman for three. Looking to draw the foul. Doesn't get the call. And a good job on the glass this time by the Golden Eagles. Jamal Kane grabbed that one. He's the best athlete on this Marquette team. Howard will shoot three free throws. Looks like it was Nurser. And if it is, it's his second. And you foul. Marcus Howard or Andrew Rousey, you can count those. Coming off the ball screen right in the slot in transition. You want to get a hand up, but Nurser got a hand on the hand. With How that make right there, Howard and Rousey between them this year, 28 for 30 from the free throw. And the Howard family has to be the best free throw shooting family in the country. Mm -hmm. His brother Jordan is... Uh, at Central Arkansas, big scoring numbers. In fact, Rousey in your screen right now, he's got more made threes in his career than any Division I player active right now, except for Marcus Howard's big brother. Jordan is number one and Rousey's number two. Rousey just can't escape the Howard family no matter how he tries. <laughs> we mentioned it yesterday. Rousey and Howard, they must have, at the end of practice some days, they must have some great shooting numbers. So Howard knocks down the free throws, and Hauser's come back into the game, Jay, with two fouls. And Marquette goes on. A 2-3 zone. That will give a different look and cover up the middle a little bit better because you got two big guys, Daryl Willis and Shaq Morris, inside. Wide open Willis. Hauser over to help, and they got him for a foul. Hauser just picked up his third. Well, Shaq Morris occupied Helt in the middle. And that meant Darrell Willis could come to that short corner from the opposite side. You sent a cutter through, and that's the second cutter that comes through. And not a very smart play by, by Hauser. you got to lay off that, just let him score. It's more important to stay in the game. As you say, you can get a basket back. You can't get a foul back. That's exactly right. I know I'm in trouble when I start quoting you before 9 o'clock in the morning. Three-point play, third foul, lead up to six. What a pivotal sequence that was. Wichita State runs really good zone offense. Call it the Red Series. That comes from John Kress, who was, the, was and is the mentor for Greg Marshall. The screen for the screener action. Good job by Samaje Haynes-Jones. Not giving Rousey any room. Rousey got caught in the air. Very fortunate. That ball still belongs to Marquette. But they'll have just three seconds on the shot clock. 
when we come back. And when we come back, Jay Billis going 94 feet with Landry Shaman. Yet another great honor for Landry Shaman. Ninety-four feet with Wichita State's Landry Shammer. What was your first job? I uh, worked at a baseball field and uh, did odds and ends jobs, drove right. the golf cart around. How much money did you make? Uh, I made like two fifty a weekend. All right. How about your first car? Uh, it was a '96 Lexus LS 400, paid like twelve hundred for it. Twelve hundred bucks. Yeah. All right. I hear you are a uh, really good cook. What do you? What's your best dish that you make? Uh, anything, but probably chili. I like chili a lot. So cook a lot for your teammates. Try to. Yeah. How, how often? Oh, uh, you know, every now now that we're in season, not as much, but try to still. Best player you ever played against? Uh, it'd be De'Aaron Fox last year. All right, Coach Marshall starts getting on you and yelling at you. What's he saying to Landry Shaman most often? Uh, the joke was one a day. Uh, I used to have like good practice and turn it over one time, so they say they just call me one a day or something. I'd like to cut it down to one a day. Yeah. 94 feet with Landry Shaman. What a talented young man, uh, Thank Landry you. Thank Shaman. You. Oh, yes, too. yes, yes. Also pictured Landry Shaman. <laughs> uh, 6'4", just seems taller and longer than that and, and plays with a real nice pace and poise about him. You can't speed him up. Yeah. And he just knows how to play. He's got a great feel for the game. Very, very smart out on the floor and also very athletic and talented. He's got the same winning DNA, says Greg Marshall, that Fred Van Vliet had and Ron Baker, but he's a better athlete than both. The DNA. Boy, have they had a run in Wichita in recent years. And a turnover to Cheatham step over the line. I think it was five. Five. So Marquette a little bit scrambled right now. Hauser's on the bench. Marcus Howard's really going, but not a lot so far for Andrew Rousey. Steve Wojciechowski does a little pacing on that Marquette sideline. Well, Marquette really needs to get Andrew Rousey going. He's not Hasn't had a ton of opportunities. Wow. A very tough shot. That's one of those no, no, no yeses as Samaje Haynes Jones gets one to go. He is so fast and explosive with his first step. Oh, spotting up on held out on the perimeter. Howard. Not only making shots, making tough shots. That's 13 for him. 13 points in what, nine minutes? Four for five from the floor, three for three from the line, knocked down a couple of threes. Maybe nobody else has to heat up if he's going to be yeah. that hot himself. Reeves off the glass and good. He is a good shooter. Played a lot of quality minutes against California in yesterday's ball game. Passes well, coming off shoulder surgery. You can see the wrap he's got on his, on his shoulder. Wichita State's now made seven of their last nine shots, got a seven point lead. Well, look at this defense. They're not giving Rousey any room at all. And in fact, one time they didn't give him enough. And Haynes Jones called for the foul. For the foul. Marquette and Wichita State in the first semifinal. The second semifinal comes your way at 10 o'clock Eastern time tonight. 5 o'clock locally here at Lahaina. It'll be Notre Dame and LSU. A game that you can see on ESPN2. Notre Dame beating Chaminade. And how about LSU and the win they picked up over Michigan? That was an entertaining game last night. It was a great game, and they played, LSU played so hard in that game. It looked like Michigan was going to come out with a win. They were up by nine in the second half, but a late charge by LSU and the, yet another terrific play. The hesitation that Marcus Howard has with his dribble is really impressive. He keeps you off balance. He has 15 of Marquette's 22 points, and we're just past the midway point of the first half. And there's a travel called on Willis. And Greg Marshall not happy. He's going to his bench to bring back in one of his starters. Now Zach Brown is going to come in. And Willis who didn't play a whole lot yesterday. Coach Marshall wasn't thrilled with what he got out of him. Willis right back to the bench and Brown back in. And even though Marcus Howard just made that very difficult shot, that's the kind of shot you want to make Marcus Howard and Andrew Rousey take and make. Difficult twos without fouling them. Nearly turned it over. Here's a look for Rousey. Yes. It took a broken play. A loose ball, and Marquette immediately looks to that three-point line. Whenever there's an offensive rebound, loose ball, broken play, they are so dangerous. Shamit, little dump down. Too strong off the glass. Howard the rebound. Marquette can tie or take the lead. A nice job by Theo John, not the foul there. 
And a difficult pass into the post. Turns it over. Marcus Howard lost the ball in traffic here. Knocked away. And as soon as Annam caught the ball, there's Andrew Rousey stepping into that shot. Now, whether that's a loose ball or an offensive rebound, the same principle. It is so hard for the defense to recover to that three-point line. And that's a shot you have to work really hard to get in the half court. You want to take it in every opportunity you get. What a drive and left-handed finish by Shannon. As good as Andrew Rousey and Marcus Howard are, and they're outstanding college players, the best player on the floor is Landry Shannon. Yep. And he's going to play a long time. And he's going to play in the NBA for a long time. There's a good number of NBA folks here, scouts and GMs, and they're all talking about Landry Shannon, just a sophomore. Redshirt sophomore. Had to get a medical redshirt his first year after a broken bone in his left foot, not the foot in which he suffered the injury this year. I'd go inside to Shaq Morris right now. He's got Anim on him. He's got Anim on him? Anim on him. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. <laughs> Fran Cam. And nobody helping out. Nice middle, drive. The middle was wide open. Morris came out on the perimeter. And nobody was at home. Shocker fans making some noise here in the morning here. But behind it, two great fan bases and two, we talked about it earlier, two schools that just love their basketball. Adam lost it on the way up. Had it knocked out of bounds, though, and it will stay with the Golden Eagles. You have to be prepared for contact when you take the ball to the basket against Wichita State. They will put a body on you. They are not fouling you, but they are physical with their body. Rousey. Offensive rebound and a good one by the freshman Elliott. Howard forces it up and it will go. Wow, that was acrobatic. What a circus shot. But Zach Brown did a great job of staying with Marcus Howard on that throwback after the offensive rebound. That could have been an open three, but he was alert and took it away. Welcome to the Marcus Howard show here in Lahaina. Moore is trying his second three of the game already. And what a great job by Brown to keep it alive. Supposed to be in a jump ball, though. Brancam short. Moore is fouled by John. The two big guys getting physical underneath. John looked like he got it up top unless he got him with his left arm on his chest. Looked like a pretty good block. The two big bodies they are indeed. Under eight media timeout. We're seeing a couple of guards today playing some very high level basketball. Well, Landry Shamet has been so efficient, but Marcus Howard has been absolutely spectacular in every way on the offensive end. It's a Phil Knight birthday bash with 16 teams, two tournaments, one time only. The PK 80 starts Thursday. Apparently plane travel has become so expensive, but ESPN expects us to get there a different way. We'll be in Portland in no time for the PK-80. Hold the tip. Sensing about halfway uh, across the Pacific, Dockage might, uh, might get a little tired on you, might, might really start dragging you down. The PK-80 presented by State Farm, two separate eight-team tournaments. This is one side. Duke, Florida, Gonzaga, the ranked teams here. This is the other side, including North Carolina and Michigan State. They don't play each other. It's like having two separate Maui invitation, as if you will. Two separate eight-team tournaments. Looking forward to being there starting on Thursday. How about Feast Week this year? Shaquille Morris at the line for the Shockers. Nine players have played in this game for Wichita State as Hauser continues to sit with three fouls. And all nine of those players, Jay, have made a basket already for the Shockers. How good was Shaq Morris yesterday against Cal? 25 points, with seven rebounds, four block shots. And especially in the second half, he was a man among men in the lane. People were bouncing off him when he was going up for shots in the paint. Right now, Zach Brown is on Marcus Howard. Howard's 5'11", Brown 6'6", good athlete, good defender. Rousey gets free, too strong on the three. And he's got Connor Frankamp on him, Rousey does. He's had some opportunities. He doesn't miss this many shots where he gets that good look at a, good look at the basket. 
Help hits the deck. It'll be a tie up and the arrows going to give it back over to Wichita State. Whenever there's a ball on the floor with these two teams players are flying all over the place. Yeah. Well if you want to play you better dive for a loose ball right. Well Zach Brown got a loose ball in yesterday's game against Cal that I mean, he was the last guy that should have had it relative to his positioning but he just laid out going after that ball It was really impressive to watch. You have to think this is going to go inside to Zach Morris. Or Shaq Morris. We got a Zach and a Shaq. Yes. <laughs> Morris does get it. Too strong. And again, the two guys, Kelly and Brown, all over the offensive glass, both had their hands on it but couldn't control it. Well, they know their role. And you're not going to see a lot of three-point shots out of Rashard Kelly. He goes after the ball and positions himself. He gets low. He blocks out on the offensive end. Hardly any rebounds in this game because now the team is missing very much. But Wichita State has more offensive rebounds than Marquette has defensive rebounds. Another hesitation. And Howard called for the offensive foul. That'll be his second. That's a bad call. One, there was no angle. And two, there's no way that Marcus Howard can knock down one of these Wichita State guys. That's a horrible call. Absolutely horrible. Grazed his shoulder. And he wasn't even there. It goes as the second on Howard. And Howard goes to the bench. 6.28 to go in the first half. It's Rousey and Cheatham now with the backcourt for Marquette. Shamit's wide open. Boy, that was a beautifully executed play. Refused it, and then Sha Shaq Morris set a nice little fade screen for Landry Shamit, and he was wide open. Rousey splits the double team, finds the open man. Cheatham the kick. And a foul call on Cheatham. Stepping in was Kelly. So back to back offensive fouls going against the Golden Eagles. Hauser anchored to the bench with three fouls, has hardly played today. Howard alongside him with two. Sham at the force. Marquette in transition. Rousey trying to go coast to coast. Wichita State ball. Shamit picked up his dribble but finds help. Marquette's had a, a few possessions where you could get frustrated offensively. You don't want to pick up a frustration foul here. Turnover. And Kane, the best athlete on the team, off to the races. That's got the Marquette fans on their feet behind the Golden Eagle bench. And just down one possession. Morris gets a look. Here comes the double. Another offensive rebound by Kelly. Must have his foot on the baseline. Right foot went down, it looked like, before he threw the ball off of Kelly, so it'll be shocker ball. And it's really important to have all five guys from Marquette on the defensive class because when you've got guys like Rashard Kelly, Zach Brown, they are going after the offensive class. The little guys from Marquette have to stick their noses in there and help out and rebound. Boy, Helt working hard, hedging on screens, getting back down low. Shaq Morris is going to the bench now for the Shockers. Haynes Jones, not a good look, but guess who's there? Zach Brown. And a travel, though, on Reeves. Anytime there's an air ball, it's always an advantage to the offensive team because you can follow the flight of the ball. The defense has to turn and block out. And so Tom Davis used to run basically a, a jump shot lob because everybody turned to block out. When he was at Iowa, they did that all the time. It was really effective. Hauser's hardly played. Howard is on the bench, and Marquette is only down by three and with the ball. Defense, 
And on the drive. Needs some help. A good job by Wichita State to stay home on that drive. Rousey to tie it. What a follow, but Kane misses the slam. Numbers for the Shockers. How about that transition defense for Marquette? Willis steps in and is fouled by Helt. That'll be his first. That looked like it was going to be a layup, Wichita State. But all five guys for Marquette got back in transition. Ultimately resulted in a foul, so Daryl Willis is going to go to the free throw line. But that transition defense, pretty impressive. Covered up just enough so all five guys could get back. Wichita State in an advantage situation came away with nothing. Rousey, a senior, spent his first year at UNC Asheville, scored 41 points in a game there as a freshman. I think he got that against Dayton, if I remember yep. right. Can't give him any space. Nice Ooh. look. Kane. A steal by Adam. And what a block! And another one! Rashard Kelly with two blocks in a row! That was impressive. A block underneath going against Marquette. How about Rashard Kelly and the effort he's given on the defensive end? Well, Greg Marshall said he wanted him to be like a junkyard dog. Doesn't give up on the play. He barks once, barks twice. That's a big dog. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. And Boost Mobile. <laughs> and, and we are envious. I will admit that much. Uh, this has been a good game. 32-29. Wichita State leading Marquette. And Marquette in the game despite foul trouble and in large part due to what Marcus Howard has done today. Marcus Howard has been absolutely spectacular on the offensive end. And Marquette battling some foul trouble, not just with Marcus Howard with two, trying to get to halftime without him, but also Sam Hauser, who picked up his third when he came back into the game and Marquette went to his own. And Sam Hauser was great yesterday in the game against VCU. And he's a he's a an indispensable player for Marquette, and still they're just a possession down without him. Willis misses both free throws, and again Marquette comes down with a chance potentially to tie if they can knock down the three, which, as we know, is on uh, page one of their playbook. Nearly knocked away, was knocked away, nearly stolen by Haynes Jones. Still plenty of time. There it is. And it's going to go. He has a great shot fake, and he went right into Samaje Haynes-Jones. He sought out his body as soon as he got him up in the air. A little step back move, and the referees aren't supposed to allow the player to jump into, because he jumped straight into him, but his back was turned, so because he wasn't facing up, He shot that like his eyes were on the rim like it was a layup. He must have made a few of those in his life to not smile when that went in. I mean, he's a he's a gritty, intense guy, but he can make all kinds of shots. And Marquette with a chance to tie it. And automatic with him at the line. The interesting if that gets him going. Big three minutes before halftime. Can Wichita State stretch this out a little bit? Going into the big guy, immediate double team and a foul. You can see two Marquette players there with their hands held up in the air saying, I didn't do anything. Yeah, well, Anum came over and hit him, hit him with his body. I mean, there, there's no question that was a foul. <laughs> well, 
Morris has been surrounded by Marquette defenders ever since the game began. Richard Sr. out of Edmond, Oklahoma. Pretty nice touch. He's a really skilled player. You think he's all power, but he's far more than that. He's just a super talented basketball player. And shows his personality during the game. Engages the fans, you know, smiles, doesn't, doesn't keep his emotions on the inside. He has fun out there. Two-point lead, Shockers. Marquette. All game long, been trying to lift this shocker defense and then attack it. Brown stayed down on the Rousey shot fake right there. Now a look inside for John, and with five on the shot clock, Morris is called for the foul. And Greg Marshall wants to know why. I mean, you forced him off the lane. He's catching the ball, basically going into the corner. Why? What's he gonna? What's Theo John gonna do once he catches it there? I mean, that's a win for a post defender is to get your guy to catch it out by the short corner. You're giving him the opportunity to make two shots with no defense. One of two and a one point lead for Wichita State. I think Shaq Morris is big. Then you look at Theo John. <laughs> Theo John's just a freshman. Yeah. He is not built like a freshman. 6'9, 245. Nice cut and nice reverse there. Beautiful feed from Kelly into Shannon. They're just too easy. This little web screen off the opposite elbow. Got to get more pressure on the ball to take away vision because Marquette just got picked apart. Two minutes to go in the half, three point game. Rousey lost it. And numbers for the Shockers if they hurry. Nice pass. What a pass. And John has to commit the foul. His third. Well, that was a beautiful look to get the ball to Rashard Kelly. Here's Landry Shamet. This little horn set. And you got to give a little help there. And, and Eve Cheatham's got to do a better job once that ball's passed to jump to the ball and take away the ball side of that cut. That's a difficult. It, it, without, without pressure on the ball, taking away vision, you can just get picked apart there. How many good things have we seen Kelly and Brown do for the Shockers? Mm -hmm. They're glue guys. Yeah. And they are all about team and all about winning. The, the beauty of those two is they don't care if they score. I mean, Zach Brown's one of the best defenders in the country and is willing to give everything he has when he's guarding Andrew Rousey or Marcus Howard. Doesn't matter who he's guarding. That's everything to him is to be a stopper. There's some pressure now. And they get it over. Cheatham's got a wide open three. Marquette does not hesitate. You know how hard they have to work to get that open a shot, so they're going to take it if they get it in transition. They're going to give it to you. Marquette's going to take it. Brown looking for help. And he traveled. And with a minute 15 to go in the half and all the foul trouble they've had, Marquette's got a chance to take the lead on this possession. We talked about Wichita State having to play tough and gritty and can't afford to be pretty. There's been a lot of grit shown by Marquette in this first half. We talk about their shooters, and this team can really shoot it. But they've showed a lot of fight against a team that's more physical and certainly has more of a reputation for being physical. Rousey puts it up. And the rebound down to Shaman. Not sure that was the right one. That was the right pass right there. Shamit to Reeves. Well, you take a bad shot, and... Andrew Rousey does not take very many bad shots. And Wichita State turns it into a layup on the other end. That bad shot was just like a turnover. It's not going to go down in the scorebook as one, but a bad shot is the first pass in your opponent's fast break. And Andrew Rousey, boy, if he made it, we would have been praising, you know, we'd been praising him for it. But the truth is that was a bad shot. And nobody expected it. And it wound up leading to a layup on the other end. Even great shooters can take a bad one now and again. Uh, no floor, nobody back, no floor balance at thing. all. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. 
And that's one of the definitions of a bad shot is you're not going to have any floor balance. More great Feast Week action. It's the Bad Boy Mowers battle for Atlantis down to the Bahamas with number two Arizona there, number five Villanova, Purdue, an awfully good team, Northern Iowa and SMU also competing down there. That begins tomorrow and runs through Friday. How many good big guys are there, well, nationwide, but in the battle for Atlantis, there are a bunch of good big guys. DeAndre Ayton uh, at Arizona, just a freshman, seven foot tall, a magnificent athlete. And you've got some huge players at Purdue. Isaac Kazu, everybody knows, and Matt Arms, a 7'3 freshman. Purdue's a legit Final Four contender. Jay, breaking news, and the guys, I'm sure Adnan and the guys will cover this at halftime. There is a report out now that Michael Porter Jr. is expected to miss the season with the hip injury that has kept him out the last few games. Well, wow, that's really unfortunate. He is a great player and was destined to be a top three pick in the NBA draft if he decided to come out. That's a, that's a huge blow to Missouri and to college basketball. More on that coming up at halftime. Brown underneath, kicks it back out. Morris had an open look, but he won't take a three here. He's missed a couple today. Brown was right, wide open off that flex cut. He needed to shoot that. Slip by Morris. Boy, you got to be pretty good at it as a 280-pound guy to slip a screen, and he did it beautifully. It would be pretty tough if you're Andrew Rousey to even give the impression that you wanted to take a charge <laughs> there. They've got a few seconds here. Rousey gets inside. Anum misses the corner three at the buzzer, and Wichita State will take. For the Shockers this afternoon, a lot of foul trouble for Marquette, and it's Wichita State leading 41 to 36 at halftime here in semifinal number one at the Maui Gym, Maui Invitational. Now send it back to the studio time for the Alpha Romeo halftime report with Chris Patola and Dallin Cuff. Here's Ad Denver. You're watching ESPN's coverage of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. On the beautiful island of Maui, we welcome you to Lahaina. This is the Maui Gym and Maui Invitational, all a part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Another great day in paradise here inside the Lahaina Civic Center with the Maui Gym Maui Invitational. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis. And yet another good basketball game going here in a semifinal between Marquette and Wichita State. The Shockers up five going to the second half. What's your take on what you've seen so far? Well, the gritty play of Wichita State, and there was a lot of grit shown by Marquette as well because they had foul trouble. Sam Hauser, three fouls, only played three minutes in that first half, and Andrew Rousey, one of seven. But Wichita State dominated in the paint. They did a good job on the offensive glass. They got the ball inside, and they really did a really nice job scoring off of turnovers. That's really the difference in the game. The game was tied at 32 with Marquette shorthanded. And they did a better job, Wichita State did, of closing out the first half. That's why they have this five-point lead. But Marcus Howard, this is the reason that Marquette is not only in this game but has a chance to win. He had 17 points in the first half, six of eight from the field, knocked down two of his four three-point attempts. When Andrew Rousey was not seeing a big basket, one of seven for his backcourt made eight points. Marcus Howard just took over in that first half. Howard with 17, the only two shots he missed were a couple of three-point attempts, made all four of his twos, and as you can see, the rest of the team, with Hauser having foul trouble, and Rousey just three for 10 from the field in the first half. Howard had to carry a heavy load. Let's see if Hauser can stay in the game. When he came back in after picking up his second, he picked up his third nine seconds later. Howard short on the three, but it's off. Morris out of bounds, belongs to Marquette. Running a little version of America's play. They're coming right up the middle. The elevator door is closed for the screen. And Marcus Howard, that one might have been the most open he was all game long. He had some size on him with Zach Brown at 6'6", covering the 5'11", Howard. Fran Camp on Rousey. Rousey goes right by him and scoops it up and in. Uh, Helt was trying to set the screen to take him back toward the middle, and Rousey just refused it. Never brought his left hand on the ball to get it up quicker. Hauser guarding Kelly. That pass deflected and stolen away. Wichita State was looking to go into Shaq Morris right away, as they should. And he's the one player that Marquette doesn't have any answer for. And I'm not sure they're going into him enough. 
Cheatham driving on Shamit puts the brakes on and left it well short. Boy, he did everything right except miss the shot. He set himself up for a pretty good look. I think he was actually looking behind him at first to see if he could get the ball to Marcus Howard. Ten to shoot. Look inside. Morris. There's just too much help from Matt Held. Nobody rotated over. And just because you're helping out on a ball screen doesn't mean you have to stay with the ball. You can't stay too long. You're trying to help your guy who's getting screened get back in front, but that's it. Rousey coming off a couple of screens, gets free and knocks down a three-pointer to make it a two-point game. Look how far he has to run during the course of the game in order to get shots off. He's a well-conditioned athlete, and he does not need much space at all. You give him space, and he's going to make it. So the two guards now, Howard and Rousey, have combined for 30 of Marquette's 41 points. Nice look. And Morris, nope, wave it off. Going to be an offensive foul. That was Helt stepping in to take the charge. We saw that call going against Marquette in the first half. That time Helt stayed into it. Are, are, what do you think of those, those plays? You think he's there in time? It's not a question of that. Once the guy gives the ball up, I'm not sure that that's... Like, I don't think that's a, a play that... If it doesn't impact the actual not, yeah, play. I, yeah. I'm not a big fan of it, but... I mean, it's in the rules, so the referees have yep. to call it. As long as they call it consistently, that's fine. I'll always think the block charge call is the hardest call to make in basketball. Especially the, the speed of the size. That. They, they yeah. think the referees have a hard time with a number of calls. <laughs> number three on Zach Brown. So he picks up a couple of quick fouls here early in the second half. And that's going to force him out of the game. Austin Reeves is getting ready to come in. You know, just on the charge block, uh, on your point you know, of it being the hardest call, I actually think it's the easiest one. If it is not an obvious charge, it's a block every time. And that, that that's a pretty easy call to make. Marquette again with a chance to tie or take the lead on this possession. Cheat him with a drive. Pull up. Short. Good job by Landry Shamit to get Really good pressure on that shot. Cheatham's a good driver. Much better defending. How about that pass inside? Bounce pass from the big guy. Morris the assist. Reeves the bucket. A much better job of defending that little back pick on the opposite elbow. Shamit got a layup out of that, but then they went into flex action. A little baseline screen and... Wichita State got him on the second action, not the first. Howard splits the defense and lays it in. He's not just a three-point shooter. He's got a nice little floater and mid-range game as well. And now Marquette needs a stop. Into Morris. Forced him into a tough shot. Rebound held. And a good block out by Sam Hauser on Richard Kelly, who was positioned to get yet another offensive rebound. Another split. Rousey did it right after Howard did it, and Marquette has tied the game. Well, those two can really play low on the offensive end. Kelly, nice look. Wide open is Reeves. Golden Eagles looking for the lead. Rousey was open. Howard, no look to help. And we got a foul as it was Kelly who went flying over hell and looks like he's okay and man is he fortunate that he is I'm surprised that Helt didn't go up with that shot what an easy layup if he would have just gone up with it well, I may have seen his life flash before his eyes in the moment boy that talk about turning the corner I mean he was locked hip to hip with Matt Helt and just some over help by Shaq Morris he needed to stay connected to Helt so you could force him out rather than past you Easier said than done. Just a great move by Andrew Rousey. Morris has gone to the bench now for Wichita State. Marquette playing very well here early in the second half, which coming into Hawaii, Jay, had been a real concern for Steve Wojciechowski. They had not responded well in the opening minutes of the second half in their games before they got here, but they are playing well right now. And Rousey misses a shot he's going to make nine times out of ten. And he knows it. He's muttering to himself back at the other end of the court. Yeah, he doesn't miss any of those. Yeah. 
Reeves turns it over. Here they come in transition. Rousey got his man in the air, created some space. And I'm going to get the foul. Yep. I'm surprised Rousey didn't go right into Landry Shamit to try to pick up that foul. What a great shot thing. Timeout on the floor. Tie game here in semifinal number one in Maui. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. Part of the festivities here in Lahaina is part of the Maui Jim Maui Invitational, the uh, Saturday Night Luau. All eight teams represented a number of contests as well. With Shamanas Danley Walker and Amasa Swain winning the Cornhole Contest. And Nate Pollard, I believe, he is a, a repeat champion. That's Pollard on the right. He plays for Chaminade as well, nephew of Scott Pollard. And Nate Pollard winning the dance contest for the second time in a row. Eric Bovere, the coach of Chaminade, won the free throw contest. They, Chaminade's cleaning up. Well, Chaminade recruits dancers. <laughs> they do a really good job. They want good players, right. but also well-rounded right. players that can dance. They can play a little cornhole. That's just a bonus, I think. Tied at 45. We got a good one going here. Semifinal number one of the Maui Gym. Maui Invitational. The Marquette Golden Eagles out of the Big East. And the Wichita State Shockers as of this year out of the American Conference. They've been in the Missouri Valley Conference forever, but they're moving to the American this year. A little back pick right out of the ball screen, and Nerger was wide open. Not the best pass on that lob. Shockers in white, Golden Eagles in the blue, LSU and Notre Dame in the other semifinal. You can see that one later on tonight or late this afternoon here in Hawaii time. Rado Nerger draws the immediate double team. Marquette's been doubling the post a lot. That leaves Fran Camp open, can't hit. And Matt Help has done a nice job in this game. Doesn't get a lot of publicity, not a big score, but a really good position defender, plays hard, gives everything he has, and he's given everything he has in this one. Howard misses the three. Howard carrying Marquette in the first half with 17 points. He's got two so far here in the second half. Well, Nurser had good low position. They didn't get it to him, but Willis knocks down the jumper. Well, help was out trying to help on Landry Shaman. Did a great job of keeping him to one side after that little step up screen. You know, Wichita State coming into the season, Jay, with huge expectations. Top 10 ranking, just about everybody back from last year. But Greg Marshall keeps saying it's not about that. It's not about reading the headlines. It's about focusing on the next game, staying humble, staying gritty, staying tough. That's what he feels his team needs to do. Reeves, nice look. Nurser the finish. Marquette has taken a couple of really difficult shots the last two times down. And that has put their defense at a disadvantage the last two times down as well. They need to work harder to get a better shot, a more open look. See if Marquette can get something out of Hauser. Barely played in the first half because of foul trouble. He's open right now. Misses the three. Held with the offensive rebound. It's so difficult for Sam Hauser to establish rhythm. Only played three minutes in that first half after he picked up that third foul. Little ball screen and good job at driving the closeout. It's got to be a better closeout there for Marquette with Marcus Howard. The takeaway middle. You give up the paint that easily, it's going to be a bucket every time. Kane back into the game for Marquette. Elliott as well. And Kelly, who had a great and incredible sequence, a back-to-back -back block sequence in the first half. He returns for Wichita State. Wichita fans wanted to travel on Rousey. Don't get the call. Kane for three. And now a foul on Rousey. Wait, a Marquette late in the first half, Jay, and in the opening minutes here for the second half, have had some really good looks from the outside that haven't gone down for them. Just have to keep shooting, but you don't want to rely solely on three-point shots. You know, early on in the second half, you had a couple floaters by Howard and Rousey. Box set right now for 
Wichita State. Yeah. Marquette took more threes than twos in yesterday's win over VCU, and they've taken more threes than twos here in this game today. Number one in the nation in three-point percentage a year ago. That's Willis. Tough shot. Yep. And Greg Marshall not happy with that shot selection. Back come the Golden Eagles again. Rousey thought about it. Step back, tough shot. And back come the Shockers. Well, you really have to go after the ball against Wichita State. The drive and the finish for Kelly. So Wichita State's getting shots at the rim. And Marquette's taking jump shots. That's obviously going to lead to higher percentages shot for Wichita State, but also the opportunity to get fouled. Again, swarming Rousey trying to get in his space. Got his man in the air and draws another foul. How many times have we seen him do that in the last couple of days? Hashtag the thing. <laughs> got a switch, got Austin Reeves on him, and... You know, Reeves is taller and longer, but it's so hard not to go for that fake because you know what a great shooter Andrew Rousey is, and you want to put pressure on him. You want to tempt the jinx here? The fact that he never misses? <laughs> he may miss, but it's not because of us. It's because we, of you. No, we can actually say it. We can talk That's about what true. a great free throw shooter he is. If he misses, it has nothing to do yeah. with us. Better than 90% a year ago, better than 90% so far on the young season this year. And Reeves knew he'd done it. It wasn't like Reeves argued the call or anything. And him in, Hauser out. Do you believe in the uh, in the announcer's curse for like baseball players? You don't mention a no hitter and no. all that stuff? No. You don't believe in that? No. But free throws, you believe in. Depends who's at the line. <laughs> <laughs> In Rousey's case, no. <laughs> Three-point game. But if you reference a poor free throw shooter, is he more likely to make it? No. <laughs> Haynes Jones back in. Shamit to the bench for Wichita State. With a media timeout coming to the first whistle under 12. It has been close throughout today here in semifinal number one. Wichita State needs to look for a back cut here. There's some overplay. Kelly swings it. Nurser's wide open. He's got some touch. He made 13 out of 28 from beyond the arc a year ago, and that one is true. Well, that's a heck of a pass. And Nurser was just lying in wait and ready to shoot when he caught it. Rousey, nice drive. Extra pass. Kane for three. Great offensive rebound by Elliott, but he's out of bounds. We have a timeout on the floor. We've talked about Kelly doing so many good things. Nice find in Urger. Well, Theo John just got caught in no man's land. Didn't go over for the double team, and Nurger was ready to shoot when he got it. Jay Bill and Stan Dockich, not the only guys to get out on the water here in Hawaii. The Golden Eagles back before the tournament began. They were out doing some paddle boarding and Hanging out here on the beautiful island of Maui. How excited would you be? You're an 18, 19, 20-year-old kid. You're from wherever you're from, and you find out that your team is going to play in the Maui Invitational. That's a pretty good day for a kid. Wasn't bad for an adult yeah. either. <laughs> We're lucky if Dockage makes it here for the night games tonight. Great tradition for this program, the Marquette Golden Eagles. Steve Wojciechowski now in his fourth year as the head coach up in Milwaukee. Took him to the NCAA tournament last year for the first time in his tenure. Remember, they beat number one Villanova. Knocked off a, the number one overall team at the time back in January, I think it was, last season. Lost to South Carolina in their first round NCAA game. Wichita State, an incredible run in recent years. They've had a Final Four. They've been a number one seed. They've made six consecutive NCAA tournaments. Willis off to Nurser, swings it back to Reeves. Good recovery, though, by Howard. Still plenty of time, just 10 seconds on the shot clock. Kelly driving, kicking, and the finish for Willis. That was really solid execution toward the end of the clock. 20 seconds of offense, then pulled it out. Did not get sped up, did not panic. 24 points off the bench for Wichita State. 
Howard to miss. Numbers for the Shockers. And Reeves will lay it in. And Howard comes up limping a little bit and grimacing. Looked like something on his right leg, ankle perhaps. He's okay, but he was favoring it and continues to favor it. Timeout Marquette and Howard grimacing as he makes his way back to the bench. We will keep an eye on that. Obviously, that would be a huge loss for the Golden Eagles. Semi-final number one from the Maui Jim Maui Invitational. Wichita State right now with its largest lead of the game. They're up 10 on the Marquette. The winner will play the winner of Notre Dame LSU in the championship game tomorrow night at 10 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock here in Lahaina on ESPN2. Watch Howard as he goes down on the shot attempt. Gets up, appears to be okay here. Then Reeves drives on him. A little bit of contact between the two. And the first thing you notice is Howard favoring the right leg. You can see him hopping on the left leg there. And then in the Wichita State huddle, Reeves was favoring his left leg. Reeves has come out of the game. Howard remains in the game. They were both involved in both plays. So there's contact on both plays. So I'm not sure on which they got hurt. Looked more like the second one. Hauser. And a block. I think it was Willis who got him. And back come the Shockers. Well, anytime you hesitate, and there was some hesitation, Wichita State is going to make a play. Shockers turn it over. Sam Hauser with a nice drive. But watch when he brings the ball down here and moves it around. That gave Willis the opportunity. you got to go strong and into a shot blocker. It's easier said than done. That was just a great defensive play by Darrell Willis. Here in the midway point of the second half, Marquette tied the game on a couple of occasions. Wow. <laughs> now, Greg Marshall said it to us before the game. When these guys come off a screen, they come off ready to shoot. And Rousey certainly did there. Yeah, they come off firing. You wonder how many miles in a game Andrew Rousey runs. Yep. Like, like when Ray, he, Reggie when, Miller or something. Yeah, we used to watch Ray Allen, J.J. Reddick, guys like that. Put a Fitbit on these guys. Oh, they have those on. Yeah. Fran Camp. The answer. That was a little bit different because that was inside out interaction. That's the way that Wichita State has to play. Well, Fran Camp can really shoot it as well. Fran Camp trying to trail Rousey around a screen again. Howard a huge first half, just two points here in the second half. No call, and Wichita State ball. Shamit with a crossover, switches hands and lays it in. That was pretty. Use that off arm to keep the defender Hauser away, and then finish with the left. That was a big time play by a big time player in Landry Shamit. This is danger time right now for Marquette. Golden Eagles need a score and some stops. And Nurger called for the foul. Boy, that's just a smart play by Andrew Rousey. Goes right into Nurger. Watch Landry Sham, a little crossover. And watch that off arm. He just keeps the arm of Hauser away so he can get that up off the glass. It's just a beautiful play. Never took his eyes off the rim. Nurger picks up his third. He'll sit down. Shaq Morris, who got a pretty good rest for the Shockers back into the game. It's been a consistent theme. The Marquette looking to get threes, that's what they do. But you've seen Wichita State attacking the paint, attacking the rim. They're getting easier shots. Howard takes advantage as two shockers collided out on the perimeter, and that freed him up for a drive. And a great finish over size, even though Marcus Howard is small. He is a good finisher. Not getting enough room. It's it's hard to go. It's hard to go around Shaq Morris. <laughs> Just ask Zach. Zach Brown had a hard time getting around him. Shaq and Zach Howard. cover the ball screen. <laughs> Howard converts the three-point play. He's got 22. Rousey's got 21. Nobody else has more than three for Marquette. Grand camp open. That was a heck of a rebound by Greg Elliott. Mistimed it, still brought it down with the left hand. 
Powers for three. Got it! Two possession game. What an answer by Marquette. 25 for Howard. And Sam of course he dragged that pivot foot there. Didn't get called for a walk. Energy level for the Marquette fans has come right back up in the last couple of trips. Shot clock's at four. Framkamp has to force it up and oh. hits it. Boy, Hauser was right there with an outstretched arm. It looked like they actually touched hands on the follow-through. What a shot by Frankamp, who couldn't buy one yesterday. One of 11 against VCU. Today, five for nine, including three for six from three-point range. I'm at Cal, sorry. Hauser, no, and just great blockouts there by Wichita State. Yeah, Wichita State's going to put a body on you every time. Brown travels. Media timeout here in Lahaina. Fran Camp with a much better day, and the Shockers benefiting from it. Well, Connor Fran Camp started his career at Kansas. That's just a big time shot over Sam Hauser. He's feeling it today. It's a Phil Knight birthday bash with 16 teams, two tournaments, one time only. The PK80 starts Thursday. It sure does. North Carolina's in one bracket, Duke's in the other bracket. All kinds of great matchups coming your way from Portland. The PK80 presented by State Farm. This is the Maui Jim Maui Invitational here at Lahaina, part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. And at Wichita State, a very balanced attack with a nine point lead. Well, we can certainly talk about Landry Shamit, his great play. Connor Frankapp's having a good game. I think the star of the game, though, for Wichita State's been Rashard Kelly. I mean, he has done every tough thing you want a player to do. He's got six points, eight rebounds, three of them offensive, seven assists, and two block shots in 25 minutes. He has been fantastic. And two great block shots, two highlight reel block shots that came within about three seconds of one another. You know, this PK-80, I thought it was impolite to talk about somebody's age. <laughs> I think it should have been the PK none of your business. <laughs> Doesn't roll off the tongue quite as yeah. easily. They should have had that for me in high school, the JB21 with a fake ID. <laughs> now don't give away state secrets. It's a statute yeah. limitation yeah. pass, brother. I'm in the clear. Yeah. Tipped away by Cheatham. Ooh, and Cheatham. A little contact there towards Fran Camp as they were both chasing down the ball it was going out of bounds and now uh, both coaches a little bit steamed I mean, no question that Cheatham initiated the contact but then Wojciechowski must have heard something in the aftermath for him to get upset Greg Marshall's a little hot under the collar as well no big deal he got no Frank Kemp got in the way so he couldn't go and save it. It's no big deal. And now Marshall and Wojciechowski are talking to each other as the game is going on. You don't see that very often. That would be a good fight between those two. Deep one for Frank Kemp with the shot clock running down. Rousey. Guess and who? another block by Kelly. Star of the game. Uh, Shamit at the other end. Quick pace. Marquette ball. And between the pace and the fact that Marquette can shoot so many threes, they can cut into a deficit in a hurry, but they are not having their best shooting day. They are just 8 out of 29 from three-point range right now. Well, you wonder the early start, two games in two days. It's going to be three games in three days. If that's, that's certainly not optimum for a shooter and a shooter's legs. Morris to the free-throw line. Richard Kelly's just been fantastic. Times out yet another block. I mean, he blocked that with his wrist. Frank Camp did a nice job getting in the way. Probably, probably hit him a little bit, slow him down. And Kelly, a guy, he's a senior. He has never missed a game in four years. This is the 110th game for the Shockers since he got there. He's played 
in every single one of them had 10 rebounds yesterday against Cal in the starting lineup today and you got to believe he's going to stay there tomorrow the way that he's playing today. Well, he's on the all bench team in the Missouri Valley Conference but if uh, if Greg Marshall's going to send a message to Daryl Willis and start him does it mean he can't be on the all bench team again <laughs> or he can no longer be the sixth man of the year. How, how many how many starts. Do you, do you get before you're taken out of that's consideration an, for the sixth man of the year? That's an excellent question. Get our research department on that. I think the way Kelly's playing, he, he might not be in play for that award if he keeps playing this well. Cheat him with a drive and a finish to get it back down to nine. They did a good job of hesitating off that hedge and then attacking. Inside five minutes to go, the winner to advance to the championship game against the winner of Notre Dame and LSU. We'll have another game coming up for you half an hour after the end of this one on the consolation side. Cal and VCU here in Lahaina. Not sure that's a foul there. It's just two big guys playing. Number three on help. This is about stops right now for Marquette. We can talk about the Golden Eagles hitting threes and making up the deficit, but they have got to get stops in order to win this game. Reeves the pull up. And Marquette ball. And Andrew Rousey ran right into a screen. And he stayed screen. It blotted out the sun. Marquette fans on their feet trying to give their team a little bit of energy here with four and a half to go. So Richard Kelly's even making a catch difficult, forcing Marquette to catch further out on the floor. Hauser's wide open. It'll be Rousey from the corner. And they're now 8 for 30 from three-point range. With the foul trouble in the first half, it's just been a tough day for Hauser. He's played a lot in the second half. He's only got three points in the game. Kelly no, and a foul going on Brown. Timeout on the floor, 3.58 to go. Shockers up by nine. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Maui Visitors and Convention Bureau and VisitMaui.com and Microsoft 10. Number six, Wichita State leading Marquette 68 59 here in semifinal number one of the Maui Gym Maui Invitational. Time now for tonight's plays of the game, driven by Continental Tire. Well, Richard Kelly has had a great game, has delivered passes, seven assists, three blocks, and those three blocks were all spectacular. And he has played a complete game at both ends of the floor. His rebounding. This was the play, the plays of the game. One block saves a bucket, then another block saves a bucket. It's not going to show up in the scoring numbers, but Richard Kelly's been the star of this game. Absolutely. Nine-point lead with 3.58 to go. VCU and Cal coming next on the consolation side a little bit later on. It will be Michigan and Chaminade, another consolation bracket of game. And then the second semifinal tonight, or late afternoon out here, Maui time. Notre Dame and LSU. Rams in the house. VCU getting set to take on Cal. Two teams who love the press. Should be a good one. Wichita State shooting 52% in the second half. And that's why, because they are getting the ball into the paint. Really good execution offensively by Wichita State to get what they want. That was assist number eight for Kelly. Wichita State's bigger and stronger at every position. Now the two Marquette guards, as good as they are, very small, both 5'11". Rousey did a great job there to create a little separation. And a little, little push-off with that off arm. And was able to get Reeves going toward the baseline and then pulled back. Look how tough those shots are. That, that's the definition of a tough two. Shaman. Oh. Give him a little bit of space. And he's got he's got an extra gear. Watch how tough this shot is. Austin Reeves does a good job here staying in front. 
took a little bit of a push back. A little Brian Russell right there, but <laughs> but that's a, that's the definition of a tough two. Make him take a tough shot. It doesn't hurt you that bad. You give him an open three, that can really hurt you. You talked about the extra gear that Shamit has. He never looks like he's the fastest guy in the court, but he does get where he needs to go. Plays with great pace, stop and go. He's got size yep. too, yep. so he can see over the top of you. Very athletic. He's a pro. Definitely. Yep. He's got a great understanding of the game. And he sees, it's almost like he sees a play ahead. And he likes to cook, so he's a great catch. Well, was it chili, he said, was his favorite? He said that was his yeah. best. Yep. Pressure on the ball here for the Shockers trying to make Marquette work hard. Take a little more time to get the ball up. Cheatham can't finish the reverse. The ball's loose. And eventually will be tied up. And the arrow will give it to Wichita State. Thanksgiving morning starts your day with first take at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. They'll get you ready for all three NFL games, plus preview college football's rivalry weekend and some Turkey Day surprises, of course. First take also streaming live on the ESPN app. I didn't know they were going on Thanksgiving. You don't have to wait until your meal to have enough family argument. <laughs> Start bright and early. This is one of the great weeks of the sports town. Obviously, the NFL rivalry weekend of college football feast week here in college basketball. Maui, PK 80, Bahamas. Two forty to go. Nine point lead. The Shockers hoping to move on to the championship game tomorrow. Morris from the baseline. Guess Kelly's who. got it. Guess yep. who? You're going to change his name from Kelly to guess who? He is always around the ball. Shamit. He is such a good finisher. Now that was a really tough play. He got the bounce pass from Shaq Morris, and he caught it in a crowd. A lot of guys would walk with that. Tipped out, but Reeves has it. Spins. Oh. What a move by Austin Reeves. Has not been Marquette's day from beyond the arc. And at the other end, the Shockers are just making some great plays at the offensive end. Austin Reeves had shoulder surgery last year. Both his parents played at Arkansas State. Not sure mom and dad had that move. That's fantastic. <laughs> Think the bench liked it at all? Marquette had worked it back to a tie game on a couple of occasions earlier in the second half could never grab that lead back and Wichita State just executing so well near the end of the game. Well, how good is Wichita State going to be when they get Marcus McDuffie? Yeah. Hey. Howard can't finish the layup. McDuffie out perhaps until conference play begins. Shamit couldn't finish it. Reeves has it. And he'll call a timeout. They are winded right now. A minute five to go, but they're on their way to the championship game. They have played very well in the last 10, 12 minutes of each of the two games here in Lahaina. Well, they've worked hard to do exactly what they want to do. They're getting the shot they want, getting the ball in the paint. It's been a really impressive performance by Wichita State. And again, Wichita State playing without Marcus McDuffie, who was their leading scorer and leading rebounder last year. 
And to play at this level, like Marquette's a quality basketball team. And how good is the Big East going to be this year? Mm-hmm. They're picked that, seventh in the league. Top to bottom, that may be the best league in the country. Yeah, they got seven teams in last year. Yeah, it's almost not fair to compare the leagues when you got 16 teams in some of these super conferences. But top to bottom, I'm thinking Big East is as good as anybody. Villanova, Seton Hall, Providence, so many quality teams there. So Wichita State, both these schools, and Xavier, Xavier, of course, as well. Yep. So Wichita State, both these schools had to get up early. Wichita State now will have more rest going into the championship game than whoever wins the Notre Dame LSU game. That game's not coming for for several hours here later today. And speaking of Notre Dame, I am really impressed with the attire worn by Mike Bray. Mike Bray and his staff went, instead of Hawaiian shirts or golf shirts, they went T-shirts. And he's setting a new standard, and I really appreciate it. Uh, Higher standard or a lower standard? A higher standard. I really appreciate it. I think that's the way to go. Now, the truth is, you know, because Mike, when he was an assistant to Mike Krzyzewski, he wore a coat and tie like everybody else. Then he got to Notre Dame, went mock turtleneck. Now he's open collar. And here he's got a T-shirt. Right. Now, I think if the trend continues and, and people go T-shirts, he's going to show up in a robe and slippers. <laughs> and I, I welcome that day. I think we are overdressed yeah. for these games. It'd just be nice to see him relax a little bit. He's so uptight around his kids when he's, pra- when he's no, coaching quite, them at practice. Hey, they play better. In a, when you're in a T-shirt, the guys play better. Absolutely. That's a proven fact. Now, tank top, I would, that would be a problem. Pretty interesting LSU team that Notre Dame's going to see tonight. Under Will Wade. They play hard, don't they? They earned that win against Michigan last night. And there was just so much joy, jubilation on, on the faces of the kids. And Will Wade picking up a big win to advance to the championship side of the bracket against the Irish tonight. Michigan will play Chaminade. And then the next game we'll have for you in about half an hour, VCU and Cal. Well, that'll be a track meet. Yeah. Both teams like the press. Why King Jones wants to establish a 94-foot culture where they're going after people. And that's what VCU traditionally has done. They didn't do it. They didn't press. VCU did not press as much last year under Will Wade. Now at LSU. But with Mike Rhodes back, who was a longtime assistant to Shaka Smart, they are getting back to, to really pressure. Bears in the house. Rams in the house. They are waiting their turn. Should be a good one coming up. And Steve Wojciechowski just brought most of his starters out. Marquette, which has lost to Purdue before they got here, they will fall to two and two on the season. But two and two playing some excellent teams. Very good team. Purdue, I think Purdue's way better than its ranking. It was ranked 19th or something, or 16th. Purdue's way better than. It. And we'll get a chance to see them against some great competition down in the Bahamas. Shamit making it look easy. But you bring Shaq Morris up that high to set that high ball screen. How are you going to get around that? Four fifty, it's five bucks in a cab to get around him. Rousey with a deep one to make it 80 to 66. Just 18 seconds to go, and the Shockers will move to 4 0. Steve Wojciechowski will take his first loss ever here with the Maui Invitational as either a player, assistant coach, or head coach. And Greg Marshall's team will go to 4 0 in the season and wait to see who they will play in the championship game tomorrow. So the Shockers have advanced, and they'll take on either the Irish or the Tigers, depending on who wins the second semifinal later on today here on the beautiful island of Maui. We invite you to join us for VCU and Cal half an hour from now. Sports Nation, presented by Toyota, is coming up next. The Shockers beat the Golden Eagles 80-66. to They are moving on.